Welcome to a very special Ask GC Anything with Lizzie Dignan. We're here at the House of Parliament and we're here for the launch of the OVO Energy Women's Tour. Lizzie has very kindly offered to give us some of her time and she's pretty busy, so it's very kind of you. Thank you for coming in, uh, especially and making some extra time for us. Now, we've had loads of questions from people who are huge fans of you, so I hope we can rattle through them. Uh, <laughs> We both speak pretty fast, so I think yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be right. um, so this first question is from Yebaum on Instagram, and they ask, Hi Lizzie, you mentioned earlier in the year that you'd gone on your first and last five-hour ride for the year. What kind of duration on the bike do you find works best for you? Well, it's an interesting topic, actually, because the reason I put it on Instagram was because I'd seen this kind of trend across a lot of professional female athletes posting about how much long hours they'd done and I just thought it was important to offer a different perspective to potentially other young female cyclists following yeah. me that it might work for them but it doesn't work for everybody and for me like five hours just makes me slow yeah. I do plenty of four hour rides and yeah. harder yeah. but yeah it was just about offering that different yeah. perspective really it's a really good point because it's related obviously to the races you're going to be targeting yeah, yeah exactly yeah great thank you very much um how about this from uh this is from uh, Elliot B123456 on Instagram, what's your favorite pre-race ritual? Do you do rollers or turbo the night before, or just an easy spin? Uh, it very much depends on where I've traveled in from. So if I've had a flight the day before, um, then I'll try and do something after a flight. Yep. But if I get in a flight in the morning before and I'm able to ride on the road, I'll do kind of an hour and a half, a couple yep. of sprints. Yep. Very simple, nothing yep. too heavy. Um, and pre-race ritual, I always try and wear brand new socks. Brand new socks? You yeah. must get through a lot of socks. I do get through a lot of what socks. What do you do with yeah. the old ones? I use them in training. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fair enough, yeah. We wouldn't want to waste socks. No, no. Okay. That's good to know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so and I suppose that's also interesting, a question from me. Do you, all you, you and your teammates all do the same thing the day before a race when you've arrived, or do you go off and do your own pre-race training? Everyone pretty much does within sort of a two hour range of rides. So we'll set off together at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's important for us to sometimes wrecky a course as well, yeah. particularly if it's a sprint to try and see the last couple of K so we know where yeah. we're gonna, yeah. each person, you know, peel off in the lead out, stuff like that. Yep, yeah. cool, thank you. Um, this is a slightly less technical question. Also on Instagram from mxtth slash ew. I would like to know, what is marriage like between two pro cyclists? <laughs> That's so far so good, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think there's definite advantages to being married to someone who does the same job. Yes. Um, just because they understand what I'm going through. and yeah. um, We give and take a little bit, you know. We're lucky as well that our... Compromise in, in a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, we're lucky that our kind of focus is in the season at, di at different points. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I might cook a bit more, clean a bit more when it's yeah. a couple of weeks out from the Giro yeah. and let him off for being a grumpy <laughs> man. And, you know, he'll do the same come September. Yeah, he so. understands the pressures, which is exactly. great. Yeah. yeah. Do you get much time at home together? It must be, you know, racing schedules. It must be a bit... Um, it's difficult, definitely, uh, in the spring and in the lead-up to the Giro. Like, last year, we had eight weeks where we didn't see each other, which was tough going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, like, off-season, it's 24-7, yeah. you know, so yeah. you give and take a little yeah. bit. Great. Thank you. Um, Esme SC on Instagram would like to know what advice you would give to women new to racing or thinking about getting into racing? I would say give it a go. Yeah, why not? Um, if you've got that kind of itch, then yeah, give it a go. There's nothing to be scared of. I think the, the main point to remember is that we all started somewhere. I started and I was under 16 and I was getting beaten by under 12 boys. So, you know, we've all started somewhere and I think yep. You just kind of have to throw yourself in at the deep end of it. Yep, no, I agree. Um, yeah, I found it pretty scary at the start as well. <laughs> but I was a bit older. <laughs> um, also on Instagram, Ace from Bases would like to know whether hard sessions cause you any gastrointestinal issues. Unfortunately, yes. It's a problem I've um, experienced my whole career, actually. Yeah. Something that I've had to manage. Had loads of medical tests, have never really got to the bottom of what's wrong. It's um, amazing, really, because you've had re really serious problems you've spoken about, and to, to perform at the level you do with, yeah, yeah, and trying to be a vegetarian in some <laughs> countries that aren't so friendly to vegetarians yeah, must exactly. be tricky. It is tricky, but I think everybody has their sort of vice, you know, if, if they're under pressure and they're tired or whatever, it comes out for some people in a chest infection, you know, yeah. or. Yeah. Uh, 
ankle injury or whatever, whereas my problem is always my stomach. Yeah. So it's a clear sign for me that I'm run down and I have to yeah. back off. And yeah. sometimes it comes, you know, at really annoying times in the season, but it's, yeah, something I've learned to manage. Yep, great, thanks. Um, uh, Gil Bate would like to know what your go-to springtime training session is. Um, I think the great thing about spring is that all the long, in my opinion, boring hours are done <laughs> and it's about intensity. So um, the relentless kind of aspect of a spring classic is short repeated efforts with yeah. quick recovery and that's what I love doing. So um, yeah, I like to do capacity efforts, I would call them. So anything under five minutes repeatedly, yeah. short, intense climbs, that's what I like. Sounds horrible, but <laughs> you know, different riders for different goals, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like the fact that the pain's over quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, if you can recover well. Yeah. <laughs> well, wonderful. That's, that'll be really interesting to people, I think. Um, so now we've got a question on um, from Lucy Elmore, who's a huge Lizzie fan, as I think everyone is here, um, and would love to know how you motivate yourself to train when the weather's bad or when you don't feel like riding, um, as I need something else to motivate me other than aspiring to be as good as you. Thanks. Oh, well, thank you, Lucy. Um, I think for me, I'm lucky that it's my job, so it's about being conscientious. It's about making sure that I'm doing what I'm employed to do. Um, but from a kind of amateur perspective, how I will motivate myself post-professional career is just the feeling of kind of disappointment or guilt or laziness really if I don't do it like yeah. to avoid that feeling for me is worth yeah myself to get out. yeah yeah I think it's true for most people who know that sport makes them happy yeah exactly <laughs> nine times out of ten it's going to make you yeah. feel better this is a question from me now so I happen to think I know that you used to be a runner is that right I do yeah. yeah do you still run at all um, I have started running in the off season, yeah. yeah so yeah. Phil, my husband, he yeah. uh, got tested a couple of years ago for bone density, yeah. and he had yeah. some issues and was encouraged to run in the off season, yeah. That's a big point. which is great because now I have a running partner in the winter. Yeah. Um, yep, weight bearing exercise is very important for cyclists to do yeah, exactly. in the off season, especially. Yeah. Yeah. I really like running; it keeps your condition and your weight down through the off yeah. season, um, and it's quick and easy. Like you can put a pair of trainers in a suitcase on holiday much easier yeah. than you can a bike. Tell me about it. Yep, I'm going to get so much back because I keep bringing up running on GCN and getting told off, but thank you very much. Um, this is kind of similar, I guess, in that it's about strength training, which is also you know, weight-bearing. But um, Lindsay Ackers would like to know if you do any strength training, and if you do, what do you do and how often? And I think it's quite general, that probably means core and weights. Yeah, again, so I think this is really personal. I have teammates that spend three, set, three nights a week in the gym, and it really works for them, and they benefit loads from it. Yeah. I've tried, and I didn't. I just got slower, um, slower and sluggish so I actually do all of my core stability sessions at home so every other day I find it cheaper than going to a gym yeah um, quicker as well you save quicker, time and it's yeah it's easy to do like even from my perspective I follow people on YouTube you know yeah. like I, it, people might not believe that professional athletes do that as well but I do so yeah, yeah. You should check out some GCN uh, core stability sessions with Matt Stevens. Oh, really? <laughs> Actually, I think they're a bit too easy to be honest with Lizzie. Okay, but. yeah. <laughs> um, right, this is uh, from, I think, on Twitter. This is Jill Trigg would like to know what your favourite pre-race meal or snack is. I'm all about eggs. Love eggs. Maybe not pre-race. Post, I'm all about eggs. Okay, yeah, but pre-race an egg. I found I've had bad experiences with eggs. Porridge, yeah. Yeah. Porridge. We like porridge. I like porridge. That's good. Great. Thank you. Um, and similar, similar vein. Um, James Kendrick uh, would like to know how do you manage racing as a vegetarian? Um, and he says you're such an inspiration. Oh. So here you go. Um, Give him a good answer. Uh, well, being vegetarian, I've been vegetarian since I was 10 years old. So yeah. um, it's something that I'm very used to now. It's yeah. not something like I've not cut out meat no. as a professional athlete. So I've always been accustomed to it. Um, I definitely started to take my nutrition much more seriously in like the last five years and noticed a marked improvement yeah. in performance. Um, so actually being a vegetarian pushes you to be more adventurous to take your nutrition much more seriously because you have to consider where you get any protein and vitamins from um, so yeah my challenges are coming when I'm traveling yeah. when I'm in Europe they're yeah. not quite as you know I've experienced this yes a vegetarian ham yes. omelette and chicken yeah chicken if it's basically if it's not bleeding it's, yeah. it's vegetarian they think yeah and they just don't get it so like it's about preparation really yeah 
Do you travel with food in your suitcase for emergencies? Like yeah, yeah, I've always got some, yeah, chickpeas. <laughs> chickpeas, peanut butter. Nice, yeah. great, thank you very much. And this is possibly our last question, but this is from Ben Moore. He says, uh, hi Lizzie, I'd love to hear any Cervelo testing stories you have. <laughs> Honestly, that was probably one of my favourite periods of my career. It was such a good team, men and women. Yeah. Um, I think it was ahead of its time in some ways. In massively, yeah. yeah. A great atmosphere. Every yeah. the, the team just clicked and we were really successful. We were quite a good um, team, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> not, um, not just me, but... Yeah, and and I learned so much there and I loved it. Um, I have a funny story that actually we went on a joint men's, women's training camp in Portugal and... Um, my husband was there, but I didn't really, I only remembered him as the Irish guy. And uh, he, he remembers a conversation we had at the dessert buffet. And he told me to stay away from them, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's probably why I don't remember him. No, I was going to say, I would have yeah, would have never gone near him again yeah, if he told you to stay away from dessert. Shoved a chocolate cake in his face. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't say that to me now. <laughs> no, I should hope not. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Lizzie, for your time. It's been wonderful talking to you. And um, there's so many questions we couldn't answer. I'm sorry to all people who sent questions in that we didn't have time for, but... Next time. Uh, next time. It's, it's, it's been a busy day because it's the launch of the Ovo Energy Women's Tour today. And uh, you can watch Lizzie racing there. It will be screened live, I think. Yeah. And uh, it's a bloody good race. So watch it. If you'd like to check out more Ask GCN things, you can look at Matt Stevens uh, interviewing Esteban Chavez down here.